these are all cars that had a meaning uh, for me and for the history of roof automobiles. And I'm standing here of the roof turbo number one that was created in the year 1977. And it was the first car that was opening the door to the press. Uh, it was the German car magazine Auto, Motor and Sport uh, that made a report of this car and made a full test. And the uh, name of the test was the roof number, the roof number, because journalists always like to play with my family name. Because roof means uh, a reputation, but it also means call. So you can always play uh, with the headlines with my name. <laughs> okay. So this is the turbo with uh, 303 horsepower and a five-speed gearbox that we introduced already in 1977. And uh, it was a bit ahead of the factory because uh, 10 years, no, 12 years later, they also had a five-speed gearbox. Uh, as you all know, the 930s um, came with four speeds. And uh, with the roof five-speed gearbox, we uh, made the car a lot more drivable and a lot more performing and interesting vehicle. And of course, it brought the uh, emotions for the car that were needed for this type of a vehicle. And uh, over here, right next to the roof turbo number one, you see the CTR3, which was the first car that had our own silhouette. As you can see, the proportions are different. The, uh, the roof of the car is much lower. And um, it is more or less from the, from the feeling when you are sitting in the car, you feel that you are in a Le Mans race car, you know, the, the low windscreen and um, the racier feeling. It's a mid-engine car with a 777 horsepower engine, twin turbocharged. And it was, it's a very, very well-performing car. And we built 28 of these vehicles. And they're already very appreciated amongst the, the collectors. So from uh, the CTR3, I want to show you another piece of history, uh, which is the Turbo R that is based on the 993 Turbo. Uh, the typical from roof, no run gutters. And... Uh, an integrated roll cage. The integrated roll cage uh, follows the A pillar and the roof line and B pillar, and it's well hidden because it's all covered with leather. So you don't even realize that you have an extra uh, roll cage, but when you drive the car, you feel how stiff it is. And there are no squeaking noises whatsoever because nothing, the, car, the body is so rigid, nothing moves and uh, it gives way. So that's a very important fact. Uh, the engine was uh, 520 horsepower uh, air-cooled uh, rear engine uh, boxer, boxer engine. And um, this was yeah, the last iconic air-cooled car uh, that we built besides the CTR2, which was um, a follower of the famous Yellowbird. Unfortunately, I don't have a CTR2 here at the collection, but eventually we will have one. Uh, right here, we make uh, a step to a complete different dimension. This is the uh, prototype of our eight cylinder with the roof V8 engine. Uh, the roof V8 engine fits snugly in the 911 because it is a, a very flatbed engine and very compact. Uh, so it doesn't require more space and it's actually lighter than the six cylinder. Uh, boxer engine and uh, we have 520 normal aspirated horses and we are propelling this car. We are having it right now at a stop and uh, there will be continuation of the development to uh, bring it into the production in one of our cars in the future. But again, the green car is ready to drive. It's ready to go anytime. Then we have a little stranger here, a classic Maserati Merak. That is uh, from a customer. He's trying to find a good home for this car. It's the Italian version with a two liter engine. Uh, I, the car is not exciting to drive. It's a 1979 car, 
but I think the shape and the design, since it is a Drijaro design, it is a, a jewel amongst uh, car collectors because that's a design that will never ever come in this style. They call it the wedge design. All right. Then next to the Maserati, we have a good old German car again, a Carrera 3.2. This is of our collection. It's uh, pretty much standard, has a little bit wider wheels, and uh, we keep it here for the family. And I'm sure Aloisa will be driving it from time to time. <laughs> and uh, from the Carrera 3.2 classic, we go to another classic, which is a 356 SC. Uh, original 30,000 mile car, never restored in this condition. I was able to find this uh, over 30 years ago and brought it home from California. It's also a jewel that we enjoy very much. Then here in the center, we have a 911S Targa, 1967, that we did the full restoration on this vehicle. And uh, it's owned by an overseas customer and he will come in the springtime now and drive it again and enjoy the uh, Alps and our area and neighborhood and drive the car with the open rear window because that is the thrill. This is what very few people know, uh, how the original Targa philosophy and idea was uh, to drive it with the rear window open because you have a, a different sensation from the engine noise uh, that is uh, with, the, with the cars with a closed uh, glass window not existing. You hear the engine breathing and snoring and doing all kinds of, uh, it's, it's just in communication with you, it's talking to you. Next uh, to the 67 Targa is a Carrera 2 Cabriolet. This is a project that I uh, started at least in my head in 1977. So it's already some time ago. And I'm very proud to say that it's finally finished and it turned out to a beautiful car. It's um, Estonia. Estonia will be driving this car and I will be driving its family. Uh, Lois, I will eventually drive it and put here at this jewel of an engine that is the famous uh, Furman 4 cam engine that uh, people always fear to break because it's so complicated to fix it. But it's a, it's, it's a work of art and uh, I cherish it this way. It's a beautiful career. And this is, by the way, the first Porsche model that came with the name Carrera. Carrera meaning the race, of course, as you all know, is uh, from the Spanish language. Uh, uh, but the Carrera name was only given to the four camp. So it was something very, very exclusive. And then the Carrera name was uh, given again the next time with the Carrera RS Centers in 1973. And then subsequent models, they were all Carreras, as we all know. But that was very, very exclusive, the name Carrera. It only meant four camp. So now here, this yellow machine is the icon number one. Are you already showing it, Eliza? This is the icon number one of Roof. And this car wrote the biggest history of our company and is our, how would I say, our main asset and equity of the company, uh, the, uh, the yellow bird. And the name yellow bird was actually a nickname that was given by some American photographers from the uh, Road and Track magazine uh, because they loved it. It was a very cloudy and rainy day uh, in 1987, the 11th of April, when we did the high-speed run in Era Lessin in northern Germany on the Volkswagen research track. And uh, most of the cars that were presented had a dark color, could hardly be seen, and the photographers at that time didn't have equipment like today with the electronic enhancement uh, or Photoshop whatsoever. It had to be on the film and uh, therefore a, a bright looking car and this yellow was just the right thing and they loved it. And on top of all, it was the fastest car. Uh, so everybody was fascinated and in love with this car. And this love affair continues and continues and of course was amplified with the idea that we came to a video game and uh, the video game creators chose this car 
as the supercar for the Nürburgring. And uh, in 1989, the famous movie with Stefan Roser was made when he did the Nürburgring, the, the special lap, everything sideways. I think most of you know the movie. And Stefan is also known as Mr. White Sox because he never showed his face. All we could see were his feet and his shoes and his socks. <laughs> he was working there. Alois, Alois, let me yes. share with you. Let me share with you an, an anecdote. Yes, there please. Several, there are several people in our club. Yes, that were maybe eight, ten, fifteen years old when you came here to Chile, and yes. we got my roof to drive in Las Vizcachas. Yes. And, and many, many guys remember those things, those days, and that experience was your pilot. I don't remember the name of the pilot. Uh, that, that was his name, yeah, Wolfgang. Wolfgang, remember. Wolfgang. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. people still remember that and always talk about that experience. So maybe <laughs> there is something in the group at the end yes. that was participating in that thing. We will invite them to talk. Wonderful. Yes, of course. I mean, unfortunately, Stefan couldn't come at that time. Uh, yeah. He was very engaged in some other uh, projects. Uh, but uh, St Stefan is the iconic person uh, that goes one-to-one -one with this car <laughs> as far as the driving, you know, from that. You know the iconic uh, movie, I'm sure you yeah. remember the Hilbert, yes. Mm -hmm. This car here is something that will be explained to you by Estonia. And we're waiting for her, she's coming later. And that is her project, and I would like her to explain the car. <clears throat> this here is a 1970s stock 911T Coupe. Uh, the specialty about this car is that uh, I drove it out from the Porsche factory on the 10th of June in 1970. So almost now 51 years ago. And uh, the car was owned by a friend of mine, and I was able to buy it back later and put it in my own car. The car lived in Santa Monica, California for 15 years. It's a very original, very beautiful car that has a lot of sentimental value. Now, when we look at this light ivory, early 911, that is something very special. This is a 901 pre-production car, chassis number 27. And uh, <clears throat> this car, is one of the 82 that were delivered as a 901 model. And then after November 15th, they became 911s because of the argument with Peugeot and the settlement and everything went a friendly way and uh, an extra one and the name fixed it. <laughs> so so it's, it's also a piece of history. Uh, the specialty about this car is the gentleman who bought this car knew saw the car in Earl's Court in London at the car show in 1964. And he didn't leave the show before he got a contract signed to buy this car. Wow. And that was the first 911 sold to a private individual. And um, <laughs> actually the import of the uh, a company called um, AFN, uh, they were first reluctant to sell the car because the car was only there as a show piece. But uh, he said, I want this car, I'm not leaving the show. And uh, he ended up buying the car and the car had to be delivered back to the factory and had to be delivered again in England. And it was an aeronautical engineer who uh, bought the car and he transported the car with a BAC transport uh, cargo uh, airplane. And there was a test flight between <laughs> England and, and Stuttgart and transported the car as a new car and flew it into England. There are photos there. I mean, it's, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing story. It's a beautiful thing. Showing to you the, the gentleman was a, from Finland originally. And his name was Sorio Ranta. And he was probably the person who owned the oldest 911 the longest time, you know, it's amazing. He, uh, he passed away two years ago, the gentleman. So you see for how long he owned this car. Wow. Did you see the picture? Yeah, yeah I showed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Now, when we see a green car, it got to be an alloys roof car. 
Uh, what you see here is a dream car that I built for myself. Uh, it looks like a regular 356 Carrera 2, like the famous fork, fork hand car, but it is something different. Although every Porsche buff and enthusiast would state, oh yeah, it's a Carrera 2, but he looks from, from outside. But what it is, I'll show you. It has a complete 911 undercarriage, front axle, rear axle, fuel tank, McPherson struts, uh, the um, trading arms in the rear, the trading arm suspension, everything from the good 911. And when you look at the motor now, you see that it is a shortened 911 motor that was created by a gentleman called Polopoulos in America. And with him, together, we created this motor. It is a, a shortened 911 motor, so it has the full dry sump lubrication, the same system, everything from the 911. And it uh, sounds like a Carrera engine, like the 4Cam, uh, because it's very similar. It's an overhead camshaft engine, very powerful, very torquey, 2.4 liter of displacement and 175 horsepower. Great fun, this car. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, now we go upstairs. We have a couple more things to show. I hope we will be, maybe you should take the stairs, no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Voy a tomar las escaleras para no perder la cobertura. So here we have a little bit more of a variety of cars. Uh, this here is Alois Senior, and I was Alois Junior at that time. Uh, first project of a classic car for my father Alois and me. We bought this vehicle in 1967 in a very, very rundown condition. And uh, we had the desire to restore it. And uh, it took a couple of years. In 2011, it got finished. My father, of course, passed away a long time ago. He didn't get to see it finished. But uh, I never let go. And we got the car running and completely restored and rebuilt the, the whole body. Because when we received this car, it was owned by um, a British uh, Rolls-Royce aeronautic engine engineer you know the, for the uh, there was a special project in germany it was a vertical starter airplane that was done by dornier and then politically it was suddenly uh, stopped they pulled the plug and this engineer had to go back home to england and he left his rolls royce here and uh, had forgotten to drain the water in the winter the cylinder had uh, froze and broke and the car was grounded in, here in Germany. And in 67, my dad and I, we bought this as a project. And uh, it was already modified to, um, uh, to a station wagon, what we call a woody. It had a, a woody body. It was a real utility vehicle. But originally, it was a two plus two seater drop hat uh, coupe, what they call it. So you could open the roof here of, of the car. It's decapotable. And uh, I was lucky to find a book with the original picture of this coach builder, which was Windovers. And using the photos from that book, we rebuilt the car to the original specifications. So you can imagine this, is, this was a long, long-term project. But we got it finished. And the beauty was that Estonia and I could use it as our wedding coach. And that was always intended with this vehicle. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Next to it is a 993 uh, Targa. And uh, we restored that for a customer completely like new. It was a huge, huge project. And, uh, and now it's for sale. He, uh, he was meant for his, for his wife and uh, the wife wanted something different in the meantime. So now it's now the car is available. So we keep it also here. And next to it is a 1954 3A convertible cabriolet, a Reuter cabriolet that 
turned out really, really beautiful. It's all back to its original specifications. We've got a 1500 uh, S engine, and it has uh, its uh, fashion, what do you call it, fashion gray, and blue interior with a blue uh, top, as you can see. Pick up well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, the red one here is uh, the last uh, model with a short wheelbase. It's a 68. It's a 911S, and that is my personal car that got finished in the restoration last year. And I'm very proud to own it because the uh, 911S uh, short wheelbase, especially the red car, uh, was the car that I always loved because that was a car from the sales brochure at that time. And uh, I'm very happy that I finally can drive this car now. Uh, over here, we have something from real old days. Uh, it's, a, it's a Benz Motorwagen. It's a replica. Mercedes uh, built uh, over 80 of these cars for special customers. And I'm also proud to own one. Uh, it, it runs. It's a, it's a real runner. It's a very interesting experience when you run that and when you see how courageous Bertha Benz was to go in this car in 1886, the distance from over 50 kilometers uh, with the, the roads that were not actually roads at that time. That was a big, big deal. And uh, I think it's a great witness um, of the whole history for the automobile. And uh, next to this here, we have a, a 912. It's a 68 912 that we restored from A to Z. And I think the 912 is also important for the history. It needs to be next to the 911s to understand what this program of this car meant and what it was. So next to it, we have a Speedster replica. Belongs to a friend of mine. And uh, another 912 here with patina, unrestored, but technically in great condition, it runs great. But as you can see, it has no big shine. It's all uh, original paint, and of course, it shows patina. So uh, now, here, I think that is pretty much. Uh, the, uh, the most exciting, what we have on this floor to show, it's uh, the 91730, one of the few cars that were built for the Can-Am series, 1100 horsepower with a twin turbocharged 917 motor. And uh, a customer of ours owns this car and he takes it out every other year and spins it on, on some of the racetracks. And uh, of course, this is a, a, a piece of history that all the guys with the gray hair in the Porsche Club know what a 917 is and uh, how much uh, that meant for the Porsche company, the image, and for all the racing history of all the years that came subsequently after the 917 series. So that. If we go to the other side, this is a Alves Roof love affair. So this is a, this is something you, I just had to have. I love the E-Type. The E-Type is a beautiful car. The driving experience, uh, of course, cannot be compared with a with a Porsche driving experience, but it's something beautiful to look at, and it's a great car to cruise. And uh, I love the the very first version of it with a short door. And the flat floor, it's a flat floor E type 3.8. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Do you drive it, car? Say again, please. Do you drive that car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drive this car. We drove it last summer. Uh, we don't drive it enough, but maybe three times per year we, we drive it. Perfect. Okay. Now, Aloysa, you have to show from this perspective. What you see here in the orange car is uh, the nickname of this car is Lang Hans, uh, Long, Long John translation, because uh, Hans was the guy 
who made this project at our company. And this was the first extended wheelbase version that we built as a prototype. So this is underneath, it's, it's a 993 body, but we gave it the look of the 964 from the uh, appearance. And when you look at the rear axle, especially, then you can see that here we have about five centimeters more meat that this area got extended in order to accommodate the rear axle five centimeters towards the rear. Front axle went two centimeters more towards the front. So it's seven centimeters longer wheelbase, which is the same like a 997. That was our experimental vehicle that was needed for the development of the new CTR anniversary. In the new CTR anniversary, I will show you later, and I found a model that there were changes that were made in the appearance of the body shell in order to trick the eye that everything looks again like it's supposed to be, that there is no um, proportion misreading, I would call it. Yeah, I'll show you that at a later. Just keep that in mind when I show you here, and later we get to it. Next to this one here is an Isa Rivolta. Isa Rivolta is also a secret love affair of me. <laughs> when I was 15 years, my dad and I, we had one of these, and uh, I just had to have one again. It's uh, not the type of car for the, for the car collectors that have them in the typical collection, but to me, it means a lot. So it is something special. Uh, Roadster with Patina is parked next to it. A 1960 Super 90 Roadster uh, with no rust whatsoever, <clears throat> but very, very strong patina. Show the leather how I said so, so people understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next to it is a Bahama Yellow 67 911, 130 horsepower. Uh, which was the first uh, model where Porsche tried to make some, um, how can I say, the car more economic in the sense of reducing the price. Uh, and, and this 911, that was the first year when they used uh, the aluminium uh, trim on the dash instead of the wood trim and uh, rubber mats instead of the velour mats and uh, a simpler uh, carpeting system like in the 912 because uh, that the Porsche was on the search to find an alibi to how to reduce the price on the cars, because they were a little bit um, difficult from the pricing at that time, the jump from the 356 uh, to the 911 at that time was 7,000 Deutschmarks that would buy you a brand new Opel Record, which is today an Opel Insignia. So that was quite, quite a jump from the former model to the new model. So then uh, that was step number one. And then in 68, the 911T came, and the 911T was even reduced more, and they reduced the performance of the engine in the T, whilst uh, the 67 911 still had the same 130 horsepower engine. Just like this one here, this is a 66 uh, slate gray uh, 911 with a typical uh, equipment that the early 911 had, like the beautiful dashboard and the uh, steering wheel in wood and the velour interior, the uh, auxiliary gas heater was still standard at that time. Beautiful car in this color is owned by one of our collector customers. Next to it is uh, the roof RT12, which is based on the 997. And the RT12 uh, is a 650 horsepower twin turbocharged car, integrated roll cage, uh, special air intakes for the intercoolers. And um, as you can see, the, diff uh, the rear wing and the rear spoiler. Still a very, very beautiful and very powerful car. Now we go downstairs again. Okay. 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 Now, last but not least, 
we're going to present a special vehicle by a very special lady who was the project leader and the initiator of this project. And this is my wife, my beautiful wife, Estonia. And she can explain to you what this car is about. Hola, Estonia, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo te va? Un gustazo. Hola, todo el mundo, ¿cómo están? Muy bien, gracias a Dios. Todo bien, bien. Bueno. después van a hablar con ustedes. Veo que ese es sí. tu juguete. Ese es el mío, sí. Tú Cuéntame. sabes que la gente de América, la gente de Sudamérica siempre estamos en el pango, en el lodo, y siempre necesitamos coches que sean de 4x4. Todo y bueno, terreno. Este, eh, un coche de, con a cuatro, sí, 4x4, cuatro cuatro, y es un prototipo inspirado en donde nos conocimos y basado en la, el, ten, ten las mismas bases del CTR aniversario, lightweight, carbon monocoque, y les voy a enseñar un poquito el, el diseño de adentro que tiene un poco de ver con los, con los indios, un poco de sur oeste de los Estados Unidos, un poco de Ralph Lauren, un poco de los indios navajo, la, el, la, donde vivíamos, donde yo viví durante mis estudios universitarios. Precioso. Qué bien. inspirado también por los chaps, la, la forma de chaps de Ralph Lauren. Aquí tenemos la pala por si nos quedamos cruzando el Amazonas. A ver si nos pueden salvar. <risa> o sacarnos del chaco. <risa> ¿Cuántos caballos de fuerza tiene? Ese podría ser aproximadamente 450 caballos de fuerza. Wow, ¡Qué belleza! Sí, sí. Es, eh, tú sabes que todo el mundo estaba hablando del... De, del safari, esto no es un safari, ni quiere ser un safari, esto es un poco más alto, es un poco más deportivo, pero no, no intentamos hacer un safari, por eso se llama rodeo, un poquito de cuero, aquí tienes para amarrar el cabresto, para amarrar las vaquitas, si te tienes que ir a lo, o sea, es un con de ya, con los, los gauchos, Ah, y mis botas que diseñé para ir con el coche <risa> está buena las esposas de los del club te la van a pedir ¿eh? mira, se mira impresionante impresionante y tienen todos los colores y un poquito de los elementos del coche fue un, un proyecto súper simpático donde todos los empleados participaron, todos estaban súper entusiasmados porque un proyecto fuera de lo, de lo común. Claro. Algo y, y, lo, y nos la pasamos muy bien diseñándola. Y claro, le doy las gracias a mi marido por apoyarme a, a poder realizarlo. Sí, me imagino. Cómo le ha costado cambiar de los autos totalmente deportivos <risa> a estos autos aventura. Este es un coche, yo pienso que este rodeo sería más, está más orientado como a rodeo drive. ¿Y se vende? ¿Se vende? La, o la, lo... De ir al, a la, ¿cómo se llama? Estar en la playa y de sí, surfing. Claro. Es multifacético. Oye, Tony, ¿se hizo solo uno para ti o se va a vender también? Este es un prototipo y hemos tenido bastantes... Eh, Personas que quieren tener uno yeah. y definitivamente lo estamos pensando. Claro, la producción se ha ido pues, de los otros coches bastante lenta por las cuestiones de la corona, como te puedes imaginar. Claro. Y en un futuro lo podemos hacer. Si no, está se hace muy, uno. Está muy lindo. Gracias, Felicitaciones. gracias. Son ideas. Hacer las cosas yo misma no las puedo hacer, pero les doy las ideas a, al equipo y las trato de comunicarlas y bueno, sale algo así como el rodeo perfecto oye, aprovechemos que estamos viendo el rodeo para que 
si algún socio del club quiere preguntar, comentar algo, por favor me avise y le doy acceso para que puedan conversar con Alois y con Estonia. ¿Alguien que quiera partir? I have one small presentation I would still like to make. If... Ah, perfecto. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alois. The body of this car is our new CTR that we are building now, which has a carbon monocoque, a carbon tub, and a complete cradle for the front and rear frame uh, that is uh, with a suspension in, in uh, double uh, wishbones and push rod and inbound shock absorbers and spring packages. Oh. And to show you the difference in the design, what we have done with this car. Now, Aloysia, come here, I, I want to show this because you, you could compare with the old yellow bird. When you look at the shoulder of the typical 911 gear, now look at the shoulder of the new car, how much more outboard it goes. Outbound. And we have this way, a different line over here. So the fender flares that are actually very, very big in order to uh, accommodate that large wheel that we need for the horsepower in our car, uh -huh. the fender flares don't look so massive. So we, we still keep the Coke bottles design, but we have the whole side of the car farther out. And we have here a complete different, I would call it, it's, it looks like the car went to the studio and built up more muscle, you know, more shoulder. So and as far as the length with the new wheel base, which is 70 millimeters more, as you know, we move the front axle by two centimeters. What did we do? We made the door longer and the door is 25 millimeters longer. When you look here at the, in the uh, dog leg here, and compare it with the dog leg over here with the yellow bird, you see how much longer it is in our new car. And for this reason, the eye reads the correct proportion to it. And the prototype upstairs, the orange car that I showed you, didn't have that. There you can see really the difference that the wheels have been moved, one to the back and one to the yeah. front. Yeah. So these, these are the little design clues. And of course, our new car has no rain gunner as always. Mm -hmm. And uh, special air intakes, that's our signature. And the rear uh, engine decklet could have a radius now because before it was defined that it had to be a corner because of the rain gutter. Now, since yeah. the rain gutter, on, we could make this more elegant as well. And so there are many little design clues that you don't read and you don't see in the very first glance. You really have to study the car and learn it. Certainly. But they are beautiful. Alois, Estonia, thank you very much for this unbelievable experience. I would like people in the Latin America, across Latin America, to be able to talk to you. Jose Hoyos is asking me to, uh, to talk, so I will give him access and let's see what he has to say. Alois, do I speak in Spanish or do I speak in English? No, you, let's do English with me. How is it that your wife, beautiful wife, and beautiful uh, the daughter speaks perfect Spanish and you don't? Uh, I will get better, I promise. I get better. <laughs> and a lot. And well, uh, imagine I have to talk to my family and it's only Spanish there, you know? But uh, <laughs> I feel more comfortable in English. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, it, it is very dangerous to have two women in house talking in Spanish and you could not understand what these Latin girls are talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My question, fair. first of all, congratulations. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very old admirer. Uh, almost the first day I met Porsche when I was 12 years ago, uh, 12 years old, I'm 55 now. I oh. heard about Ruff and the Yellow Bird. So it's a Thank very you. long time since I've been following your work and it's just beautiful and it's a benchmark. And <laughs> in that meaning, I always say that it's actually Porsche that uh, copies you in some <laughs> developments that you do for the cars. How, so my question is, how do you feel about that and how Porsche has said about it? 
Well, I, I see it more like it's complementary, you know, because uh, we think uh, along the same lines. Right now, we are maybe a little bit more conservative following the more the older tradition of Porsche, whilst Porsche is going uh, very corporate and very modern, which is uh, obviously also doing good for them, you know, absolutely. Uh, but I always felt good when Porsche sort of confirmed things that we were doing that they, they were doing the same couple of years later. And that always made us feel good. Yes, definitely. Well, congratulations for that. This is amazing. Thank you so much for apporting so much to the cards because you always show your love. And well, let's keep seeing what you and, and your team can work on these beautiful cars. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for, Thank for, you. for being part of it. Thank you. Y un placer, Estonia. Te mandan un saludo a los chamos por aquí. A los chamos de Venezuela. Por supuesto, por supuesto, caramba. Lo que ocurre es que hace tiempo en el club nuestro, aquí en Caracas, todos no les gustaba el tema de los Porsche Safari y, y de alguna manera eh, siempre vemos que cada día las calles están tan destruidas que ese es el carro que uno tiene que tener solamente para ir al trabajo todos los días. Sí, imagínate. Pero yo, yo crecí en el campo, así que siempre necesitamos un 4x4. Así es, así es. Bueno, mi primer carro era un Toyota y bueno, ahorita tengo el otro bajo lona, pero en algún momento lo recuperaré. Placer hablar con ustedes y felicidades. Gracias, José. René Vidal quiere hacer una pregunta. René, por favor. Ah, ok. ¿Me escucha, eh, Billy? Sí, te escucho. Ok, gracias. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity and for showing us your heart, because definitely when you show your passion, you are showing us your heart. And uh, it's very impressive. And uh, I think we all appreciate that. My question is, if you, if you could change, you can go back in time when you started your passion or, or your vision, uh, yes. is there anything that you would have done different And what would that be? Actually, that was uh, never following a business plan. A business plan never existed. Uh, I was all, only following my heart. Everything that I liked, I was able to do in my life. And, and that best, this is the turnout. But of course, the passion came because of the brand Porsche. Because I got so addicted to this brand that I always wanted to be in this world and be part of it. And today, I'm even more proud that I can say we have a, a group of uh, enthusiasts that are looking for things that we can provide. And uh, that makes us really feel good. And we are a small hand uh, manufacturing uh, place, uh, like it was uh, maybe in Gemünd in 1947 or to 1950, uh, with the capability of doing more because at that time it was very difficult to put anything together of course because now we have uh, all the access to machinery and materials and so on and, and our own combination of engineering and craftsmanship and i think that has been always our our success story well yeah thank you very much i think that's a value that right now uh, many people ha have lost It's yeah. uh, today is mainly money and money. And what I'm trying to, to tell to my kids is that you need to follow what you want, your heart. Money will come. But yeah. if you follow the money, then maybe the money will come, but your heart will be empty. And uh, I really appreciate your value. And congratulations again and, and to, to beautiful family. Thank you. That was very well said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jorge Cortés is the next one who wants to talk to you. Jorge? Jorge Cortés. Cortés, uh, hello. Hello, Jorge. my name is Jorge Cortés. I am from Colombia. And I would like to say that thank you for showing your incredible collection. My first question is if you have any project about electrical Porsches. And the second one is if you repair uh, Foreman for cam engines. Yes, we can do four cam engines since you have seen one here in the Carrera 2. If you have a problem there, just uh, let us know. We can help you. And uh, with the electric engine, we have an electric car, uh, but it's not here in the museum yet, but it will be eventually. We, we still drive it as a daily driver. 
Uh, in 2008, we introduced the first 911 with a complete electric drive. Uh, at that time, it was not meant to be uh, the new invention of the electric car, like it is being reinvented right now, as, you, as we all know. Uh, the idea was uh, to put our own electricity that we create and generate in our own hydroelectric power plants and make our cars run with it. That was the whole uh, incentive uh, of it, and uh, it worked out. And we have proven that we can go 400 kilometers distance uh, with one uh, battery load. But of course, uh, it was a it was an experiment. It was good. It was an eye opener for many, and uh, subsequently also to the automotive industry in in Germany, uh, which is now very keen to be in the electric car world, as we all know. Yeah, when we came out with the with the e roof, it was only a Tesla based on the Lotus Elise, as we all know, the first Tesla. And then we brought it up in the 911. So we called the car, the, the parole was emotions with our emissions. Okay, the emotions thank you. in shape together, you know, with no emissions. With no emission. Even though uh, speaking about uh, emissions, are you happy with the new type of petrol that is going to be completely synthetic to allow the, the normal think, energies that we used to yeah, use? I, I think this is a, a very good alternative way. And I think for cars uh, that are in the high performance range and for all the existing cars that are around in the world that say our classics here that they can still run in the future, the synthetic fuel is the answer, I think. And also, um, there must be an alternative that the whole world cannot only drive electric. It's, I, I don't see that. I, it's not possible. I think the electric car has certain limitations, and it will be good for those applications, but they cannot substitute it completely. I, I, don't, I don't see this today. Thank you. Gracias, Jorge. Domingo Olivares, por favor, activa tu micrófono. Dale. ¿Me escuchas? ¿Te escuchamos? Sí. Okay. Uh, first of all, thanks to Mr. Alois Roof and his fa beautiful family for letting us in the museum and giving us a great tour and dedicating this uh, time for all of us in Latin America and in Venezuela. Are you from Venezuela? Yep, yeah, from Venezuela. <laughs> Thank, thanks for giving us this. Bienvenido, aquí tenemos la representación venezolana en Pappenhausen. De verdad que sí. Okay, my, my question would be, uh, when did this passion for the for the Porsche brand and which model did uh, begin or be, with all the started all this passion with the brand? When and, and which model did you try? You know, in 1963, uh, my father, by, I have to say by accident, um, got to buy a Porsche, a Porsche 356 that was damaged. It, but my father drove a bus that he built himself. He had also a small tour bus company. And uh, he was overtaken by a Porsche 356. And uh, the Porsche driver lost control ended up in the ditch, turned over three times. My father helped him get him, got him out of the car. And he said, don't worry, we will look after your car and we talk in a couple of days when you have calmed down. And he ended up buying that car, fixed it. And we drove this car over a year and we had so much fun driving it. It was a Carmen Hartog 356 Super. And um, then we sold the car by, by accident again, I would say. We were driving in Munich and a young man uh, stopped us and asked us to talk to him. And he bought the car on the spot and had the cash money there. The whole thing was such an unbelievable story that my dad and I, we came to the conclusion, these Porsche people, they must be crazy. Uh, everything is, not, nothing is like in the, in the world that we knew from before, because uh, to, to sell a car was a huge effort. You had to make trade-ins, financing, whatever, you know, and, um, and, and, and the Porsche would sell like this, and the people have the money, and it's out of question. And there was also 
this trust amongst these people because they were like from the same family, you know. And that was something so special because the community of Porsche people was so small at that time. Of course, they grew and grew and grew. And now we are much bigger. But the, the spirit behind it that hasn't changed under the true guys, you know. And that hasn't changed. And, and we wanted to be uh, around these people because this was so much fun, so much friendship has happened out of those relationships as customer relationships. A customer was not only just a customer who, who brings you money and he gets his oil changed or whatever, a customer became a friend. Still and, today. And, and still today like this in our company. And, and this is why we don't feel that we are working. We, uh, we are doing something that we are having fun with. Excellent. Very, very nice. That's uh, thanks for for the answer, and that's the way I think the Porsche brand works. We're all a big family here, yes. worldwide. That's it. That's it. Oh, thank hey, you, Alois. We have a final question from Osvaldo Meje in Chile. Yes. Osvaldo, please could you activate your your microphone? Yes. So. Uh, it's not a specific question. It's just to say thank you once again for receiving us to all of us once again in, in your place, to you and your family. So it's very kind of you, and we really admire your work. We really admire your, your cars, your passion. Uh, so thank you once again for, for all your kindness uh, and for having us once again to all of us in, in, in your place. And as I said the last time, I'm still waiting to see your first 993 roof car. Uh, coming out, so thank you once again. Not the Wonderful. first, but I, I mean the, the, the reproduction of the car. <laughs> You're all invited to come here. <laughs> okay. Estonia, Alois, Aloisa, thank you very much for the opportunity you gave us today to visit this amazing museum and to be able to talk to you once again. Uh, we are waiting for you in Latin America. Uh, please let us know when you can come and visit us. All the different clubs, uh, Porsche clubs in Latin America would be very, very happy to, to spend some time with them and maybe tour a bit uh, our beautiful countries as well. So thank you. Thank you very much in the name of everybody thank you. in the Porsche clubs Latin America. Together, you are our ambassador. And thank you, thank everybody, you. for being part of it. Thank you for Muchas the whole gracias. community. Thank you, everybody. Nos esperamos en Papenhausen. Sí. Gracias. <laughs> Así esperamos. Next year, next year, Muchas next gracias. year we will be there. <laughs> Muchas gracias, gracias a todos. Gracias, gracias. Que les gracias. Gracias. Chao, chao.